I'm no card shark. I used to play blackjack a lot with a mustachioed fella in a green cap, but besides that, I don't know much about poker. But when somebody calls on the math nerds for help in doing some probabilistic calculation, we have to answer the call. Look at this. I have the ultra rare ancient social media logo card, so you can tell that I at least know a thing or two. So I saw this post on the They Did The Math subreddit the other day. Somebody was playing poker with a couple of their friends. Perhaps it was Texas Hold'em Poker. I think in that game, the players start with hands of two cards each. And you can see that the pairs here are matched matching, ace and an eight, ace and an eight, ace and an eight. And so the poster's asking, you know, all three people got the same poker hand. What are the odds of that? And is his math on the odds, which is 39 in a billion, that's what he calculated, are those odds correct? I encourage you to try pausing the video and calculating the odds yourself. See if you agree with the original poster. All of the comments in this thread either had replies correcting them or had edits correcting themselves. So there's a lot of nuance to this problem. I mean, the fact of the matter is counting problems are often a lot easier than they look and it's super duper easy to make mistakes. All right, first let's address the poster's written solution. And spoiler, it is not correct. Looking at these numbers, you can see what the poster was thinking. First, player one needs to be dealt an ace, and there are four aces among the 52 cards, hence four out of 52. Then, player two also needs to be dealt an ace. Now there are three aces out of 51 cards, and then for player three, there are two aces remaining out of now 50 cards total. So player one, two, and three all get an ace. And then he continues this logic for the eights. There are four eights out of now 49 total cards, so four over 49 to get player one an eight and then three eights remaining and then two eights remaining. So you can see where this comes from. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with this calculation, but it doesn't seem like it's addressing what the poster is really curious about because the post is about all three people getting dealt the same poker hand. His math, of course, is only calculating the probability of aces and eights. He's also only considering a single possible ordering of these cards, that the three aces are dealt and then that the three eights are dealt. But of course, they could be dealt in different orders while still obtaining the same sort of end result. So we want to take a crack at calculating this ourselves. What we're actually trying to calculate is the probability that all three people got dealt the same poker hand. Not that it was specifically aces and eights, because presumably the original poster would have been just as amused if it was, say, kings and threes. So we certainly want to consider all such possibilities. Now, it doesn't matter how the dealer deals the two cards to each of the three players. Any possible outcome with one dealing method could also happen with any other dealing method, provided the cards were reordered appropriately. So we'll just fix the dealing method and consider it with that method. And it will be convenient for us if the dealer deals two cards to each individual player at a time. So two cards to player one, then player two, then player three. And with that in mind, this solution will actually be quite straightforward. Beginning with the first player, his first card could be absolutely anything. So so 52 out of 52 or one. He's gonna get some card first and that's fine. Now the second card is not so free. There is one restriction on the second card, which is that it has to be different from the first card. If the first card is a king, the second card cannot be a king. Because remember, we need everybody to have the same hand. So if the first player were to get two kings, well, the other two players need two kings as well but there are not that many kings in the deck. That would require six kings, and there are only four. Now, whatever this first card is, there are three other cards in the deck matching its value. So we now have 48 cards remaining that the first player could be dealt out of 51 total. Those are 48 cards in the deck that have a different value than the first one. Now, once player one has got his cards, the possibilities narrow considerably for the other two players. For player two, whatever the first card he gets is, it has to match one of the two cards that player one got. If player one got, let's stick with the original example of an ace and an eight, then this first card that player two got needs to be either an ace or an eight. 
since player one got one ace and one eight, that leaves three aces left and three eights left. In other words, there are six cards left in the deck that we would need player two to potentially get. And now that player one has two cards, there are 50 total. So this first card to player two matched one of the cards in player one's pair. The second card to player two just has to match whatever the other card is. Let's say that player two got an ace, well then his next card will need to be an eight, and since player one already got an eight, there are three eights left among 49 cards total. So that's the situation for player two, and now we just have to consider player three. Now the logic for player three is identical. His first card needs to match one of the two cards in that original pair. We're saying either an ace or an eight. There are two aces left, and there are two eights left. So there are four possible cards that could give us what we want out of 48 total cards remaining. If we suppose that was an ace, then we need this next card to be an eight. Two eights have already been taken, so two eights remain out of 47 total cards. And that's it for player three. So we are done. We just have to crunch these numbers, which we'll let a calculator take care of. Multiplying all of this together gives us about 0 0.00002452, or odds of roughly one in 40,000. Now that we've accounted for all the other ways that three people might get matching pairs, not just just an ace and an eight, but any possible way, you can see that it's a lot more likely than the original proposed odds of 39 in a billion. But one in 40,000 is still pretty unlikely, so it's certainly an interesting event. But this is actually an overestimate. If you know your poker, you know there is a detail here we have overlooked. You see, in our calculations, we were assuming as long as everybody gets an ace and an eight, then we've got three matching poker hands, but that's not quite right. See, my expert team of gambling addicts advised me that in poker, it's actually more valuable to have matching suits. So this suited pair of an ace and an eight of clubs would actually be more valuable than these two ace-eight pairs, which would be considered offsuit, because this one is spades and diamonds, not matching, and this one is spades and diamonds as well. Again, it's offsuit. Of course, the number of ways you could get a suited pair versus an offsuit pair doesn't depend on the values of the cards. So let's suppose that the highest value cards have been fixed, and as we discuss the computation, we'll assume that it has been fixed as aces, and we'll calculate the number of offsuit pairs and suited pairs to solve this problem once and for all. So if our players have these three aces, how many ways could they receive eights so that all of the players have suited pairs? Well, of course, there's only one way. The guy who has an ace of diamonds would need an eight of diamonds, this guy would need an eight of clubs, and this guy would need an eight of spades. So just one way that everyone could have a suited pair, assuming that we've fixed the higher value cards. So I'll put a one here. There's a one way that they could all be suited. Now let's calculate the number of ways that there could be one offsuit pair among the three players. Looking back at our aces, if we suppose that the ace of diamonds and the ace of clubs both belong to suited pairs, then it's just the guy with the ace of spades that's going to have an offsuit pair. Now the only eights that would remain in this situation would be the eight of spades and the eight of hearts. That's because of course, the eight of clubs and the eight of diamonds are reserved for those other two players. Now certainly, since he has to be off suit, he can't receive the eight of spades. So he must receive instead the eight of hearts. In other words, there's only one card he could possibly receive to be off suit. Now, which player is off suit? Well, there are three choices. It could be player one, player two, or player three. Thus, in total, there are three ways that we could have one player be off suit. So there are three ways that could happen. And remember, if one player is off suit, well, that doesn't count as everybody having matching poker hands because the two players with the suited pairs would have higher value hands. But we need to calculate all the ways these suits could be distributed and see how many of them are made up of matching hands. Of course, the only way that the hands could match is if everybody's suited or everybody is off suit. Next, we'll calculate the number of ways 
ways that two people could be offsuit. Let's again look at our Ace of Spade, Ace of Diamonds, and Ace of Clubs. Suppose player one with the spade has the suited pair. Then there are two options for the ace of diamonds. It can't receive the eight of diamonds because these last two players need to be off suit. So it could receive the eight of hearts or the eight of clubs. These two possibilities are very distinct because if the ace of diamonds receives the eight of clubs, well then the ace of clubs has two options as well. It could receive the eight of diamonds or the eight of hearts. That's because the ace of clubs is not allowed to receive the eight of clubs because we're saying that it's an offsuit pair. So the ace of diamonds here has received a card that the ace of clubs couldn't get anyway, which is why it still has two cards to choose from. So this situation only gives us two possibilities because these two first cards are fixed under these conditions. The Ace of Spades needed the Eight of Spades. We're saying that the diamond had to receive the suit of the third card. And so the third card is just left with two options. But then really this is six possibilities. We just said for demonstration that the Ace of Spades would belong to the suited pair. But of course we have three choices for which card would belong to the suited pair. Either the Ace of Spades, the Ace of Diamonds, or the Ace of Clubs. Whichever one belonged to the suited pair, we could go through this same logic, giving us two possibilities for each of three cards, so six total. So let's jot down that six there, but then there's one other situation as well. And that's if the Ace of Diamonds didn't receive the Eight of Clubs, well then it must have received the Eight of Hearts, which then leaves the Ace of Clubs with only one possibility as well, which is the Eight of Diamonds. So in this situation, after one card is picked as the suited pair, the other two options are forced. So this gives us three additional options, depending on which card belongs to the suited pair. So the total number of ways that two of the hands could be offsuit is six plus three for a total of nine. Finally, we get to the only other way that all of the hands could actually be matching, which is if they are all offsuit. I couldn't figure out a clever way to count these quickly, but if you can find one, please do share in the comments. Let's try to go through this pretty quickly. Suppose that the Ace of Spades gets the Eight of Hearts, so the suit that doesn't match the other two cards. And then suppose the Ace of Diamonds gets the Eight of Clubs, the suit matching the third card. Then the third card has two choices. It could be Eight of Diamonds, or it could be Eight of Spades. On the other hand, if the second card, the Ace of Diamonds, didn't get the card matching the suit of the third, perhaps it got eight of spades, then there's only one option left for the third card, which is whatever the last remaining off suit card is. So that would give us one additional option. So that's three total options from the situation where the first player's eight has a suit not matching the other two players aces. So I'll jot down that three and let's count the rest of the possibilities. It could be that the ace of spades receives an eight whose suit matches the second player's ace. Then if the ace of diamonds doesn't receive an eight of clubs, it has two choices, either eight of spades or eight of hearts, and whichever it has, the ace of clubs would need to get the other one. This then accounts for two possibilities. On the other hand, the ace of diamonds could receive an eight whose suit matches the third, and then that third card would have two possibilities, eight of spades or eight of hearts. So that gives us another two options. So that is a total of four additional options. Let's continue the count. The last possibility for the first player is that he receives an eight whose suit matches that of the third player's ace. Then there are two possibilities for our second player, eight of hearts or eight of spades. Whichever he receives, there are two possibilities still remaining for the third player. In this case, eight of spades or eight of diamonds. But in total, that's an additional four possibilities. Two choices for that second ace and two choices for the third one. And remember, that's because in this situation, the first ace has received received the eight that matches the third player's ace. So no matter which eight the second ace receives, either of the remaining eights could go to the third card. So that's four more ways that all three players could receive offsuit hands for a total of 11 ways. Thus, the total number of ways the suits could be distributed in these hands is 11 plus nine plus three plus one for a total of 24. And in how many of them do all of the players actually have matching hands? 
Well, there's the one possibility where they're all suited pairs, and then there are the 11 possibilities where they're all offsuit pairs. In the other situations, not all of the hands are actually of equal value, so it wouldn't really be fair to call them equal poker hands. So that's 11 plus one or 12 total ways that the hands could actually be of equal value. So now that we're taking the suit into account, we see that only half of what we had originally considered to be ways that three players could get these equal hands, only half of them are actually equal hands. So revising our calculation, the true odds are not one in 40,000, but instead are roughly one in 80,000. So yeah, that's pretty rare, but of course, a lot of people play a lot of cards, so it's still gonna happen a lot of times. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and untucked the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, well, I think this time it might be fatal. Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you're so sick.